हेलो एवरीवन माय नेम इज़ मानसी चौहान आई एम असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर इन महारिषि यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन टेक्नोलॉजी इन द स्कूल ऑफ फार्मास्यूटिकल साइंसेस सो टुडे इन द यूनिट फर्स्ट दैट इज़ आर इन्वायरमेंटल स्टडी वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट द मल्टीडिसिप्लिनरी नेचर ऑफ द इन्वायरमेंटल स्टडीज सो फर्स्टली वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट द वॉट इज एन इन्वायरमेंट तो सिंपली वी कैन से simply we can say about the what is an environmental science so simple we can say environment is a place where both living and no living organism or we can say the component lives together means interacting with each other simple living and non living component interact with each other so what is environmental study we can say we are the both the living and non living component interact with each other is known as the environmental study so what is environmental science environmental science is called the multidisciplinary and why it is called the multidisciplinary because the various discipline come under this so environmental science is called the multidisciplinary as it brings about an interaction as we can earlier said the living and non living component between the natural world and the study of environmental component is multidisciplinary in nature it include the all disciplinary such as science humanities commerce metrology climatology geography and other disciplines in the next we will in the next slide we will discuss about the objectives and guiding principle of the environmental study so first principle is creating awareness means creating awareness among the people and what are the problem they are facing so first objective is creating awareness about the environmental problems among the people second one is imparting basic knowledge about the environmental and its align problem means what are the problems they are facing we will discuss about them third is developing an attitude of concern for the environment and our fourth objective is motivating the public to participate in the protection act protection act various protection act will be there motivating the public to participate in the environmental protection and environmental improvement and fourth one is acquiring skills to help the concerned individuals in identifying and solving problems fourth is what are the scope of environmental study so as we know there are various scopes of the environmental study and the expertise means the people who is expertise in the field of environmental science can be placed as we will discuss all them one by one it can be placed as an individual can be placed as an environmental consultant they can be a toxicologist conservation officer waste management officer they can be placed as a scientist in the water and the air quality public health practitioner and environmental manager so all these are the scopes of the environmental studies next we will discuss about the natural resources and its types so what is natural resources as we all know natural resources means the things we are getting from the nature natural resources can be defined as a variety of goods and services provided by the nature that are necessary for our day to day lives for example we can say the plants animals minerals these all are the living or we can say the biotic parts next we can see here air water soil mineral climate and the solar energy 
all these are the non living or we can say the biotic part of the and as you can see in the images all these are the example of natural resources sun forest rock minerals water oil air and soil so it is all about the natural resources and in the natural resources there are various types like uh, <coughs> we can say food resources mineral resources energy resource land resource all these are the parts of natural resource next we can see here on the basis of origin on the basis of origin we have classified the natural resources as an biotic resource and as an abiotic resource biotic simply means living and abiotic means non living components this is a basic difference between both of them कि अबायोटिक रिसोर्स इज लिविंग एंड अबायोटिक रिसोर्स मीन्स नॉन लिविंग सो बायोटिक रिसोर्स इट रेफर्स टू द लिविंग ऑर्गेनिज्म और देयर प्रोडक्ट्स दैट आर यूज्ड बाय द ह्यूमंस फॉर वेरियस पर्पसेस सच एज मेडिसिन फूड्स एंड शेल्टर इट इज नोन एज बायोटिक रिसोर्स नेक्स्ट वन इज अबायोटिक रिसोर्स दीज आर द नॉन लिविंग कॉम्पोनेंट्स ऑफ एन इको like water soil air and sunlight here you can see in the images this is a biotic resource and these are the examples of a biotic resource biotic resource examples are here animals bacteria protist plant and a biotic resource soil light water temperature humidity and air these are the examples of biotic and a biotic resource next one on the basis of the stage of development the natural resources are classified into the potential resource actual resource reserve resource and stock resource so what is potential resource potential resource means are the resource that exist within a particular region it means they will exist only within a particular region and are utilized in the future for example uranium deposit in the ladakh is known as the potential resource next one is actual resource so an actual resource is a one that we use currently means actual resource we can say simply ki are those resource the resource we are using the currently for example water coal and the petroleum reserve resource these are the parts of the actual resource means reserve resource are basically the parts of actual resource that can be commercially utilized in the future for example mineral stock resource it means those exist in the nature but cannot be utilized due to the lack lack of technical capability means these resource are available but due to the lack of their ability we cannot use them currently for example hydrogen so these are the resources we have classified on the basis of stage of development next one is on the basis of availability on the basis of availability resources are classified into the inexhaustible natural resource and exhaustible natural resource so basic difference between the exhaustible natural resource and inexhaustible is that they are present in the infinite quantity and they are present in their limited quantity
it is a basic difference between both these resource so inexhaustible natural resource these resources are available in the infinite quantity in the nature is known as the inexhaustible resource they are not expected to get exhausted by the human activity because they are available in the infinite quantity for example solar energy or the wind energy these two are the examples of the inexhaustible resource exhaustible resource these resources are limited in their applicability means they are present in the limited quantity for example oil coal and natural gas as you can see here oil natural gas coal and inexhaustible resources solar energy wind energy and the geothermal next one is on the basis of the distribution so on the basis of distribution the natural resources are classified into the ubiquitous resource and the localized resource ubiquitous means they these are the type of resource which are spread all over the earth and are present everywhere so these are spread all over the earth and are present everywhere for example land water and air localized resource localized resource simply we can say they are only present to the certain areas or at a certain locations these are available at only certain locations where the environmental conditions favor their existence is known as localized resource so basic difference is ubiquitous means they are present everywhere localized means they are present at certain location not everywhere for example fossil fuels and the minerals these are the example of localized resource and you can see here ubiquitous resource here it is example and localized resource copper is the example on the basis of renewability so on the basis of renewability resources are classified into the renewable resource and the non renewable resource so renewable resource means they can be renewed over the certain period of time and over the period of time and non renewable resources means they cannot be restored over the short period of a time so renewable resource those resources which can be regenerated over time are known as re renewable resource and harnessing them on a very large scale can deplete the productive capability of these resources for example water and non renewable resources are those resources that can not be restored in the shorter period of time are known as non renewable resource and non renewable resource they can consumed at a faster rate than they get created by the human and for example petroleum and natural gas these are the example of the non renewable resource so in this lecture we have covered that what is the definition of environment what are the objectives scopes what is natural resource types of natural resource and on the basis of types we have discussed about various types like on the basis of origin on the basis of renewability on the basis of stage of development so we have discussed all these in this lecture in the next lecture we will discuss about the what are the various types of resources like we have discussed food resource mineral resource energy resource in the next lecture so these are the references from where i have taken the content thank you